In this video, we're going to be talking tags and VT SCADA software. So if you're new to VT SCADA, then stick around. We'll tell you what tags are, where they're used, and we'll do that through a demo where we'll connect VT SCADA to a PLC and use that to draw some information on the screen. By the end of the video, I'll have also told you how you can get a free version of VT SCADA and where you can sign up for some free VT SCADA training. Let's get started. Okay, so in front of us, we have a new VT SCADA application. And if this looks great to you, just jump back a little bit in the videos or check out one of the quick start guides to uh, learn about creating a new application in VT SCADA. Now, in this video, we're gonna go up here and click on the little tag icon up there, and that's gonna open up the tag browser. And down on the side here, you can see the different tags that we have in the system. And if I were to open up one of these tags, you'll see that the tag itself is basically uh, an object with different properties and we can kind of add and set up those uh, tags to meet our needs. We have tags for all kinds of things in the system. So if we go down to the uh, tags, new tags here, you can see we can set up tags for different drivers, different ports, uh, historians for all kinds of different things in the SCADA system, but we'll jump into those a little bit more later on. So first off, a little introduction to the tag browser. So basically up at the top here, you can see the tag browser. It says we're showing currently zero of 5,086 running tags. And now one thing about that is there's a lot of stuff in VT SCADA that's using tags. And even in a new application, you have a bunch of tags already running. Uh, but the important part is uh, VT SCADA licenses by tags. So you can see in this case, I'm using 268 of unlimited license tags. Now, typically your license would have a number here like 1,000, 5,000, something like that. Um, the 268 would typically be zero in a new application, but I do have another application running uh, that's hidden right now that's going to represent the Modbus device that we will connect to a little bit later. So. Jumping down a little bit, you can see here this top line is where we have our breadcrumbs. So we have our home button to jump back to this home view of our tags. Uh, but if we were to go down through the tag tree a little bit, then you'd start to see those breadcrumbs populating. Next up, we've got a search window here. So you can type directly into this box, but more typically people will come over and they'll click on the little funnel here and you get a whole bunch of different filters that you can use. Some really cool parts of this are things like show only tags marked as questionable, which can be great for commissioning to ensure that you validated all of your tags. And there's other things like tags in areas or tags of a specific type, which again, will bring up those tag types and you can say to show alt tags of a specific type. Now, one note about doing that is if you are in this view and you're looking for all the tags in the system, you wanna make sure that you're up on the top of the tag tree and that you have show children selected so that you're seeing everything. Um, another piece of this, uh, and I will actually note that show children shows all of the children except for, so you can see here what we have so far, except for the children in the menu. If we go into the menu, then we'll actually see there's a whole bunch of uh, child tags there that aren't shown. And it's just because outside of the menu, um, they're not typically things that you'd want to see unless you're specifically looking for menu tags. And I will note as well that if you are in the menu, you've got very different options and buttons here. So we're just gonna turn show children off. We'll see that you can edit the drawing tools, how they're displayed. And that helps you if you're in the Idea Studio, which is used to create applications. And you can also go in and change things in the page menu. So if we wanted to move things around, like say, bring the sample pages up, then you can see in the background there, the order of the pages changed. And I'll just pop that back down to where it was. So we can work on those or we can add folders and make changes uh, to those menus right there. If you wanna access that menu, then you can always go down to the little hamburger uh, button there and access that menu that way as well. So next up, we can cut, we can copy, we can paste, and we can delete tags right from here. And that also works contextually. So if you were to take a, like this historian and you were to cut and paste it, then you'd get the child of that historian as well. So next up, let's go in and start looking at creating some tags. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, top of the tree here 
And one thing that's very common is to create a, what's called context tag, and it's essentially a folder um, which allows you to sort of place all your data inside of a container. So we'll go to context here and we'll call this uh, my tags just to make it simple. We could give it an area and a description. I'll do something simple and just something for the area here. You don't need to fill these in. Um, you really just need to name it. And I guess I should name that correctly. And then over in the settings, this is one of the cool things about uh, context tags is you can add properties in here. So we're not gonna dive into this today. It's a little more advanced topic, but there's things like if you wanted to change the alarm voice template or the alarm text template uh, for only alarms in a certain area of an application, then you can just do that by adding those overrides into these context areas. So there's a lot that you can do here in the context tag. But for now, we're just gonna create the context tag. And then next, we're gonna make a child tag of that. And that will basically put it further into the tag structure. And in this case, we're going to go down to our ports and we're going to select to make a TCP IP port. So again, I select the tag from the port tags and we'll go to my connection and this is gonna create our connection to the PLC. So all I have to do here is put in the address and as I alluded to earlier, we are using local hosts. So I'll do 127.0.0.1 and the port number that we're looking for in this case is going to be uh, port number uh, 496. So typically um, we would use 502 for Modbus connection, but uh, I've got this set up on 496. So right now we don't really have to change anything else. We can just click okay to that. And now you can see we're inside of my tags and we've got my connection here. Now, next up, we'll put a driver in. And if you have a larger system, you would often put your driver here and then connect it to the port tag. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're going to create a new child again. So we we'll go further down the tag tree and you'll see these breadcrumbs being created. We'll go to the drivers and we will select a Modbus compatible device. So we'll go my driver and in the options here, we basically just need to say that this is going to be open Modbus TCP because that's the protocol that we're gonna to use to connect through this TCP IP port. And in the communications, this is normally where you would click on this tag button and then select the port that you've created. But in this case, it's going to, this star port basically says, look up the tag tree, find the port. And if there is one there, then just use that. So that's already configured for us and we don't really need to do anything else here. So now we've got our driver as a child of the connection and you can see there again in the breadcrumbs as we're adding. Next up, a really common thing is to put all of the IO tags for that driver as children of the driver so that you don't have to connect each one individually. So in this case, we'll say new child and we're going to click IO and calculations and we will select a analog here and we're going to call this uh, my values and again we could give it a description and whatever uh, but for now we're just going to read an address and in my case I'm going to read uh, 40018 as the address and this address that it's reading actually isn't giving it a normal um, Modbus type value like a 16-bit integer we actually have a floating point in there so we're going to identify that with slash float. And so in this case, we're only gonna read, if we were writing to this address, we could put that down there as well. And then we can run through the tag and look to see if there's scaling or if there's expected ranges or whatever associated with that. And this metadata is great because it can automatically populate into um, different widgets that we would draw. So in this case, let's just say that we have a display range of say uh, 20 to uh, 200 and we'll change our uh, scaled values as well to up to 200 and actually let's scale that one to one and then the expected range here let's say that the expected range is going to be between 100 and 150 just so that we can uh, show some examples when we draw this 
So next up in the quality, we'll say, you see the questionable data here, which I talked about earlier. That's really used for commissioning to basically say we haven't verified this tag and it could be great. I'm gonna turn it off right now because we won't be commissioning the system. You can see we're already linked to the historian. We can set up alarms and we can look at display properties such as units. So maybe this is going to be millimeters here that we're looking at and digits after the decimal. We could say one just to see what comes up there. So we'll apply that, click OK, and now we have a value of, you can see here, 99, 88, 91. So next up, uh, we can either open the Idea Studio to draw this, but if we right click on my value and select draw, then it will automatically open the Idea Studio and present us with some widgets that we could draw that with. Now because we filled in that metadata, we'll look at the high performance widgets. And let's just put a simple bar on here. So next up, we can see there where we've drawn that and let's draw it again and we will just jump down to a numeric value. So we'll drop that there, close this, close this, and if we go to the overview page where we drew that, you can see we have our tag there, and we can click into our tag and start collecting data from it. So you can see there that data coming through now. So that's basically it. That's the um, introduction to the uh, tag browser and tags in VT SCADA. If you found this video helpful or you'd like to try this yourself, feel free to go check out VT Skata Lite. It's a free version of VT Skata that you can download from our website, vtskata.com. While you're on the website there, you can go over to resources and under the training, you'll see a link to the VT Skata Academy. And that's a free location where you can learn VT Skata and you can walk through the steps of doing things like creating these tags and using built-in simulators to uh, learn about pushing and pulling data from VT Skata for yourself. All right, thanks for your time today. We'll see you in the next video.